You are now tuned in to everything but religion. The perfect blend of ignorance and intelligence. With DJ Storyteller and J Ma Boy Wonder. The latest news. Oh yeah. And all of the top trending topics of the world culture. Of what's going on for the moment and in time. DJ Storyteller, J Ma, Boy Wonder, powered by Virginia Radio. Let's go. What's up, world? This is DJ Storyteller. Woo! Alongside J Ma, the Boy Wonder. And this is Everything But Religion. That's right, EBR people. The perfect blend of ignorance and intelligence. Boy Wonder. Guess yes, what? Yes, sir. We have a very special guest joining us today. Very special indeed. <laughs> he became the first African American Secretary of the Commonwealth of Virginia. Mm, talk to him. In 2016, he was named Person of the Year by Richmond Times Dispatch. Woo, talk to him. He's also the youngest mayor ever to serve the city of Richmond. He got time for us? Just a little bit. Okay. We got, we got <laughs> Mayor LeVar Stoney in the house today. Welcome, welcome, Mayor Stoney. How are What's you today, up? sir? What's up, y'all? Thank y'all for having me today. Thank you for taking the time out. Yes, we sir. sincerely appreciate, appreciate it. it. We, we know oh, you. I had to be on the premier podcast in the 757, so I, heard you know, I had to get down here. Oh, that, yeah, that's you, not like an official drop. We're taking did. all oh, that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. I'm about to ride that one. <laughs> appreciate that. I know you ain't got a lot of time for us today. I know you're busy. You got a lot of stuff going on now. But we're going to start a little bit from the beginning. He had just enough time to take his tie off and sit down and talk to us. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? It, it, it's a pandemic, so... The reason I don't have a tie on is because, you know, it's a pandemic. I mean, I, I don't have to put a tie on. People working from home. Most everybody working from home. So people I talk to over Zoom or whatnot, I mean, they look just like this. So you got to pair right basketball now. shorts and flip-flops right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, what a lot of folks normally do is they put this on uh-huh. and they put, like, some sweatpants on. Under, you know, you can't see that. So <laughs> yeah. Sweatpants, jacket, nice shirt. Right. You know, a little... Pocket, you know, pocket square, you know. Oh yeah, look That's, real official. Look very official. You could do that on CNN. Yeah. You could do that anywhere. With some smooth cracks on right now. <laughs> oh, you got to have the ring light too. Got the ring light in the back. See, you don't, oh, you don't yeah. even know. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, you're right. You're, you're ready. ready. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's uh, start a little bit from the beginning. So you're from right here from the from your county, actually. Uh, graduated from Tab. Then you went on to JMU. Then where did you go from there? How'd you get into where you're at now? Yeah, you're right. I, I grew up in, in Tab. I uh, went to Tab, elementary school, middle school, high school. You know it, DJ Storyteller. I played you know, played a little sports back in the day. Yeah, you know, yeah. Played football and basketball, ran track. At one time, I thought I was going to go pro or something like that. But then I realized in the recruitment process that that wasn't going to happen. So I decided to take my talents to James Madison University. Okay. Uh, at JMU, I um, majored in political science and public administration. But on the side, I also, I was student body president as well. So I've always been involved, engaged in politics and leadership from whether me being a big brother or just me being in school, you know, all throughout my time in school in, in the TAB area, I always was either student body president, uh, leading, uh, you know, amongst my friends and whatnot. And, uh, that's always stuck with me. So I got involved in politics and government. Uh, when, once I graduated, worked my way up from being a, a fellow uh, in Mark Warner's office. Mm-hmm. By the time I was 26, I was the head of the Democratic Party of Virginia, the CEO of the party. Oh, uh, when President so Obama was on the ballot here in Virginia, we broke that 40 year curse, uh, making Virginia go blue for President Obama. Okay. Uh, then I met Terry McAuliffe when I was working at the party. And uh, he tried to get me to work on his own nine race. I turned him down. But a year later, I started working for him as his political advisor. Took him to every nook and cranny inside the Commonwealth of Virginia because I'm the Virginian. He was really sort of the outsider. Didn't know as many Virginians. Didn't know a lot of people as much as I did. Mm -hmm. I had a a pretty large network inside the Democratic Party here in Virginia. So we went everywhere for essentially three years. And uh, I was his deputy campaign manager as well. And then after that, he asked if I would join him uh, after he won as the Secretary of the Commonwealth. Um, I was surprised. I was shocked. Uh, but um, from there, I helped him restore the rights of former felons, returning citizens, people who made a mistake in their lives. Uh, people like my father, who, you know, some people out there know who my dad was. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Marvin Stoney, who you know he made a mistake when he was young, had a, a scarlet letter on his on on his chest for the for his entire life. Mm-hmm. You know that that means you know you get doors shut in your face on a regular basis. You get people telling you no, you can't do this, you can't do that. When essentially all you're trying to do is put food on the table and a roof over your family's heads. And what we did working with Governor McCall, we restored the rights to nearly 200,000 people at the time. That's, and then that's I ran great. for mayor, and that's that's where I'm in today here in Richmond. I made Richard my home now, what, uh, let's see, it's been 17 years 17, I've been living wow. in Richmond. Man. I've lived in Richmond longer than I lived anywhere else, brother, now That's if you can believe that. Uh, and I happened to become mayor of the city back in 2016, uh, once I got sworn in. So uh, it's been a time, man. It's been a journey. It's that, been a journey. That's yeah, that's, awesome. time, yeah that's, that's great. You know, I know, I know that I noticed that you're a hands-on mayor. I see you out there shoveling, sho- shoveling snow one time. Uh, <laughs> so I know hey, man, a- you can't. Here's the thing. Mayor, I think, is the closest political position in all of politics to the people. Uh, is the the if there's a job in which you are accountable? It's this job right here. When you are a mm-hmm. legislator, you can hide behind a hundred other people and say, "Oh well, the the the, the, the caucus wanted to do this. Uh, my, the group I was with wanted to do this." When you're the mayor, everybody's looking at you, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. And you got to call balls and strikes. You got to make decisions. And guess what? You're not gonna make everybody happy. And I think you all probably saw over the last year. I didn't make a lot of people happy when I removed those com- those racist Confederate monuments. Yeah, you know, I had yeah. people give me death threats, you know. Yeah. And then when you know the, the 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 protests started up and everything, the folks wanted to bash in windows and and uh, vandalize and all that. I had to call people out then. People didn't like me when I when I had to do that. So you know, you're never making everybody happy, but at the end of the day, the goal is to make a difference in people's lives, and this is a job that you can actually do that. So. Hey, I, I'm blessed. I'm grateful. People ask me all the time. They say, hey, your job difficult? Your job is hard? I said, I would normally say not as hard as the, the job my dad had. You know, my dad was a janitor at York High School. Mm-hmm. He cleaned bathrooms. He mopped floors. He scraped gum off of desks in, in classrooms. That job was all, I, I used to go to work with him. That job was a whole lot harder than the job I get to serve in today. Yeah, well, speaking of the challenges, that's what I want to ask you about, too, because I know you say you don't make a lot of people happy, and there's like there's been times where I see your live feed on Facebook, and I'm like, these people, the comments, I'm like, yo, they say you're a little ghetto kid, get your little ghetto opinion out of here, and I'm like, yo, y'all don't know LeVar Stoney from nothing, yo, he's humble, always been humble, your family's always been humble, your uncle, your brother, your nephew, all of them are always been humble, so how do you deal with that, because I've even commented sometimes on some of the posts like, yo, I better back up. I know LeVar. He's a good people. <laughs> <laughs> I've caught you a couple of times on there. Now, here's the thing. I don't, a lot of people think that I'm on Facebook and I'm on Twitter. Yeah. Uh, some years ago now, I just decided, you know, I got to get off of these platforms or that stuff will get in your head. Mm-hmm. And I learned about, uh, you know, what you read getting in your head when I play football at Tab. I would read the newspaper on Friday morning <laughs> and they'd be like, Stoney better have a good game. You know, yeah. teams. You know, the team's dependent upon him. If he doesn't have a good game, watch see Tab struggle. And I, that would get in my head, and yeah. that will throw your whole game off. Yeah. Yeah. And so I've used that same strategy while I'm being mayor as well. I stay off of Facebook. I stay off of Twitter. Stay off of Instagram, and try my best to get my team to kind of like you know help me with that. Uh, I get to sign off on what I want to say. But okay. when those comments start coming through, what you've seen them. Um, DJ storyteller, uh, yeah, uh-huh. <laughs> you've seen them. Well, they just be the racist. Yeah, very. Oh, I don't wow. mind. Yeah, but, it is yeah. racism at its finest. It sometimes it's it, it's 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 cloaked in like, well, you know, you know, oh, I have a black friend and <laughs> you know all this and all that. And you're just like, no, that is straight up racist. Um, and some people we've had to ban because how racist uh, it's become. Where you know some of these conservative types jump on there and be posting pictures of monkeys and things of that nature. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. They, they got to go. They got to wow. go. It's and a- listen, here's the thing. What I've experienced in this job is that racism can come in very, very different ways. It's, it's not just those on the right. Sometimes it can be folks on the left as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and white privilege as well. It, it also, it all comes out in different ways. People sometimes don't know it. And sometimes you got to check people when they say things. <laughs> And I have no, I've had no problem doing that. 
But after good, winning re-election, good. I really have no problem doing that now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can definitely understand that. And that's something uh, the story and I had a conversation with uh, well, about offline. We were just speaking of, you know, it's crazy how it's so much fight and so much uh, aggravation behind removing those monuments and those statues. But if you go to Germany, where some of the most terrible things happen to the Jewish community, you don't see monuments and statues that attribute to those, uh, you know, uh, I guess war... Uh, Nazis. Nazis, yeah. yeah. yeah I, I was trying to think of a better word than that, but okay, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. You got to call it what it is. And it's crazy that that's... You don't see that. You and, don't. Uh, at the end of the day, you see, not only are they racist, but these are people who committed treason, right? They, yeah, they betrayed definitely. the country. Yeah. These are traitors. Definitely. And we had, you know, three-story, four-story sort of monuments and statues of these individuals. Mm-hmm. And I just think that my city, the people who live here today in 2021, we want to be known for more than just the capital of the Confederacy. How about definitely. being known for the capital of compassion, the capital to inclusivity and, 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 and equity. That's what we're working on today, and that's uh, what I want to champion over the course of the next four years. Because I think the real test for cities like ours, for Richmond, is not where we are in 2024, but where we're going to be in 2030, right? Mm-hmm. If we don't want to make all the uh, the protests, uh, the removal of the monuments, we, we don't want those efforts to go for naught. That's just but frankly, that's symbolism. Right. It's mm-hmm. the, the the substance comes with real policy changes to actually lift up the marginalized communities, uh, not just in my city but around the country. So when folks look at 2030, that's going to be the real test because we're going to see we're going to ask the question: Has has the gap widened or has it shrunk yeah. over the last decade? Right. Yeah. Because whether it's in education, in housing, in generational wealth. And household income, we want it. We want our our, our our people of color to be, get closer to white folks when it comes to those achievements. Definitely, and definitely. that's what the policy part has to be all about. That, so, yeah, that's great. All about saying what that foundation work is worth, you know. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. You gotta have a foundation. So you don't. Have and you know, it. you know, here's the thing: it, there's a lot of intentionality behind the system that we all live in today. I mean, you look at uh, apartheid South Africa. Yeah, you uh, compare that to uh, racism and, and white supremacy in in America. All of this is intentionally done. It's written into the laws. It's written into the way the, the system works. And so, a lot of our leaders today, black and white, we got to work together to root that 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 racism, that white supremacy, out of the system and lift people up. I guarantee you this, when everybody has a fair shot and when everybody can get the best, your economy will go through the roof. That's awesome. Equity and equality is good for everyone. Equity and equality. Oh, yeah, definitely. I like that. I like that. Uh, speaking of that, uh, equity and equality, especially equity, um, July 1st. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people... July like, 1st is coming. I, I assume you might be talking about the legalization of, of marijuana, of cannabis. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, cannabis. Hey, well, we got to give big ups for, yeah. and props to Governor Northam for taking the steps. Uh, and actually, essentially, he pressed the fast forward button, didn't he? He did. He they did. were trying to wait and wait for you know a couple of years from now to legalize uh, marijuana. And he said, no, we need to do it today. We need to do it by July 1. So come July 1, marijuana will be legal in the Commonwealth of Virginia. It will be the first state in the South to legalize marijuana. Um and uh, you you may not still be able to consume it openly like oh, you yeah. can do with, yeah. let's say, uh, Canada, Toronto. Uh, yeah, yeah. But it, it should uh, reduce the amount of times that uh, people are engaging with law enforcement over just marijuana. We already decriminalized it a year ago. We also said you couldn't, you know, stop when anyone and say, well, I smell something in the vehicle. Yeah, you gotta, yeah. you, you're not allowed to do that any longer. But now we're, we're going to legalize it so people can actually grow a few plants on their own property now. Mm-hmm. And if you call with that, that's not illegal anymore. So uh, it's a long time overdue. We all know that black and brown people have paid a disport- disproportionate price when it comes to being criminalized through marijuana uh, possession. And so as we move forward to commercialization of marijuana, we have to be intentional about engaging uh, the black and brown communities in ownership of mm-hmm. whether dispensaries, man, man, you you name it, manufacturing, the commercial, we have to be have some ownership stake in that, 
there'll, there'll probably be so there are some models out there on, on things not to do. We don't want to go the way of some. I've heard some negativity out of what happened uh, in terms of equity in Colorado. Mm -hmm. You want to go towards maybe Chicago, other places that have been a little bit more progressive about giving uh, black and brown people a piece of the pie. Because oh, okay. a lot of people who made a lot of money off of this mm -hmm. and the legalization and the commercialization of, of, of marijuana it have been unfortunately white people, even though black folks have paid the disproportionate price in the in the justice system. So how do you feel about that uh, being that it's decriminalized that hopefully we can free up these these cells and these, these jails for you know less offensive crimes to really make room for those more offensive criminals being that now it's legalized? Like I said, I, I think it's Jamar, I think it's long overdue that we actually did this. Um, as you all know, the South is just a little bit different, and, and, and people say, oh, Virginia is not the South. Virginia is still the South. I always like to say my city is either the first or the last stop of the North or the first stop of the South. <laughs> we're, we're, right that's about what that. I see when I pass off in 95. Right. At least yeah. that's what I sell it to the people as. Uh, <laughs> but this is still the South, and the South is a little slow to get behind some of these progressive policies. Yeah. Um, but to see Virginia, it's became Virginia became blue a few years back, and it's really taken off in terms of the progressive policies that were put in place now to to actually level the playing field for everyone. And I think that's only going to be good for us in, the, in this upcoming decade. That's awesome. Yeah, that is awesome. Well, just to shift shift gears a little bit, I know this is a, it's a thing that's been coming up lately uh, the last couple of days, the Dwayne Wright uh, situation, and. Uh, they, I just don't understand how they keep getting away with the same excuse. They don't know this is a gun, it's a taser. That the whole uh, confusion part it just doesn't make sense to me at all. Yeah, you know what I from what I saw in my two eyes on that video out of yeah. Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, was the woman officer is saying taser, 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 but she got this heavy exactly. weapon, exactly. firearm exactly. in her hand. And I just I don't understand how you don't recognize or the people around her don't say, hey, even though you're saying taser, that's not the taser. Yeah, Put the right, taser yeah. down. Right. I, I don't understand that. Um, I will say this. Say this. So that is it, it's reckless negligence. Mm -hmm. Someone lost their life that didn't have to lose their life because of a traffic stop. Yeah. But unfortunately, that's that has happened far too many times uh, in, in our community. That people lost their life to the traffic. The, the stuff that happened in Windsor. Yeah, that you know, yeah, right yeah, there. That, yeah. in, in Windsor, in uh, that's what Isle of Wight County, right? Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. You know, Smithfield, Windsor, yeah. Isle of Wight County. Yeah. I mean, the disrespect. Yeah, they to straight that disrespect. officer. Yeah. That, that army officer, but not just a disrespect to that officer. That's a disrespect to to veterans. Period. Yeah. Uh, exactly. Or to to, to, to uh, armed services. Period. Yeah. I mean, my brother. As you know, yeah. uh, storyteller mm -hmm. serves in the military. That could have been him. Exactly, you're right. That could have been him. I mean, uh, I, I will. I do believe that if that officer was white, he would have been given a whole lot more grace mm -hmm. than the brother was. Yeah. Yeah, because he was saying he was scared and all that. He didn't want to step out the car, and he still he's seen his hands the entire yeah, his time. His hands were up the entire time. And he yeah. was scared to take you his seatbelt off. One thing I yeah. learned from you know, I was say I, I obviously I know that policing is very difficult. It's it's mm -hmm. a hard job, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. We should um, train them better to handle these situations. Because here's the thing: when you're a police officer, you are going to get hit with a no. A lot. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, just like when you are, uh, I, I know you're a, a father uh, storyteller, <laughs> so you should assume when you are about to, you know, say, "Hey, I need you to do this." Sometimes the response back is going to be, uh, "No." Yeah, yeah. You have to find ways using this to get beyond no. Mm -hmm. Right. When a person yeah. says no or a person resists, how do you use this? In your mouth to get beyond no right uh, yeah. and what i saw out of the windsor video was they went from when someone said you know when he was like hey wait up hold up which they interpreted as no they went right to pulling out guns yeah they did yeah. and the crazy thing is the other cop that was on the side that wasn't talking that much he looked scared like he should he know that the cop was in the wrong and he didn't say anything and i think that's a lot of case that happens in a lot of cases too the partners 
is it hasn't been in the service man uh, hasn't been in, in the field as long and scared to say something to a superior officer. Well, that's something and that Mayor Stoney spoke on when he first came on was accountability. Well, yeah, that's that a big is accountability. Part of it, right? Yeah, that is accountability. accountability. In, in my city, we're working on a civilian review board to hold police officers, the the the, the profession of law enforcement, accountable. That involves the community as well. I think we have to be the ones to say these are the values we want to see in our community, and we cannot allow just the loud voices in the process to dictate what that looks like. It has to be a community-driven process. What I hear from my residents, I'm sure y'all heard it from your, your, your aunties, or your dad, your mama, mom and dad, whoever's that. Folks say to me, they say, uh, Maristana, we want the police department, but we want the same police department that shows up in the white communities, in the white neighborhoods, to show up in my neighborhood. Right. Mm, yeah, That's all we're asking yeah. for. Give us the same grace that you would give uh, a white resident in the city. That's all my residents are, ask, are asking for. And that's exactly what we're going to work towards as we reimagine public safety in Richmond. Oh, that's good. That is great. It's not even like it's asking too much either. <laughs> nah, it's not. <laughs> no, that's right. Be, that's the funny part. You, you're right, Jim. That's not asking for too much. That's essentially, as my grandma would say, the golden rule, right? Right. Treat yeah, others the way you want to be treated. the way you want to be treated. And exactly. what I heard on that Windsor tape was just complete disrespect. Yeah. Yeah. You're right about right? that. Like, you know, I mean, for me, I'm one of those individuals where when I first meet you, uh, I automatically give you that respect um, and that trust right away. You are going to have to prove to me that you don't, you're not owed that any longer. Right. You're going to have to demonstrate something that, hey, the respect and trust I'm giving you right now is worthless to me. Once you do that, I might change up on you. But until then, I'm going to give you the same respect that you give me. Oh, yeah, Definitely. Yeah, speaking of respect, I gotta give this respect to your your uncle. Yo, he, he's a <laughs> yo, he's a great a great dude. I think he needs a tro a, a statue or a, a big trophy or something up for him too. Hey, he's, you know what, man? I, I love my uncle, uh, Uncle Lewis. He out there. You listen to this? Uh, I love him to death. You know because uh, here's the thing: I would have never made a basketball team, whether in the middle oh, yeah, school yeah. or in high school, if it wasn't for my uncle Lewis. Because I don't met. Uh, and some of your friends know this uh, story, tell them know that <laughs> basketball was not my strongest sport. <laughs> it was not my strongest sport. I just happened to be a decent enough athlete to actually get by a little bit, right? I, yeah, I yeah. rode the bench a lot. I was a team player. I'm one of those folks. I dove, I dove for ball, played defense, got cuts over my eyes, stitches, <laughs> you know, busted lips and whatnot. I did everything I needed to do for the team. But it wasn't my strong sport. He was a man he, did, he used me as a project. Basically, like, we gonna, you gonna make the basketball team? I was like, you really think so? He had the faith in me that we did it, but uh, it, it was a lot of he put a lot of work in. He put a lot of work in. Oh yeah, yeah. I remember. Uh, I think I saw uh, an article that your brother beat you like twenty twenty one to two or something. It's a pickup uh, game. I think... I was that like, was an like, article. Yeah, I was like, why are you talking about that in the article? Yeah, let that. Yeah, let I think uh, I visited him. You know, my brother lives on the West Coast now, yeah. and uh, he was like, let's play some basketball, which I have not played basketball in many, many, many moons. <laughs> <laughs> and bro, no lie, I was just, I was just tired. <laughs> oh, it's different, yo. We're older yo, now, yo. Things. Yeah, your mind thinks you can still do oh, those yeah. things. Yeah. But when you start actually getting out there and be going back and forth mm -hmm. on a half court, you're like. Whoa, whoa, whoa! We gotta slow this yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. Bit. You're right about that. That's your knees and talking to you. My brother's a little bit bigger than I, <laughs> than I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, me too. I seen some of his, his posts. I'm like, yo, when is, yeah, he's when a is, workout fiend now, so he's, he's a little swole. bit bigger than I yeah. remember. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, I'm about to cross him up the knees and nah, son. <laughs> <laughs> so in this journey that you've gone on, this amazing journey, um, has there ever been at a point that? that you wanted to just say these people are, are too much for me or the situation is too much for me and I, I got to walk away. No, 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 no. Never has been a, a moment where I wanted to walk away. Yeah, I find myself being very, very lucky, very, very blessed. Um, there's not been a day since I graduated from college that I've uh, been resentful or just, uh, just didn't want to go to work. Okay. And I'll admit, a lot, of people awesome. in, in, a lot of people in this life don't get that, right? Yeah. Um, I've been able to wake up every day and been wanting, just wanting to go to work. Uh, and there's a, still a lot of folks, even back then when I started out, who tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that. I've heard you can't and no my entire life. 
But, you know, I'm, I'm a very competitive person. Uh, even though I might not be the best in basketball, I do know what my strengths are. Yeah. And uh, when someone tells me I can't do something, I start thinking about how I'm going to beat this person. Yeah. How I'm going to actually achieve uh, the goal that I may have in mind. And so uh, that's always been, uh, I've always been a little bit resilient, I guess you could say, uh, mm-hmm. but also very competitive at the same time. My dad taught me that. When going to tab, and when you go to tab, everybody doesn't look like you. Yeah, yeah. You have to walk in the room not with a chip on your shoulder, but with uh, the mindset that you got to go in here and compete. Right, and yeah. that's just not on the football field or on the basketball court. That's also in the classroom. Yeah, like, yeah. And even though my father never graduated from high school, he prepared me and my brother always ready to compete. And I've kept that my, that same mindset my entire life. Mm. Oh, that's word. Dope. That that's is dope. dope. So, <laughs> so what's next for Stoney? That's you, the question right yeah, there. That's the, and what's next for Richmond? What you got planned? Uh, I'm about to go home from the office next. That's what I'm about to do. <laughs> that's first and foremost. I know that's right. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, for me, you know, first, for all the folks out there listening, we are still in a pandemic. Mm-hmm. And so a lot of folks, you know, are letting their guard down. We can't get back to a modicum of normalcy until everybody plays their role, you know, pull the sleeve up and get that shot in their arm. And then hopefully by, let's say, August 1, after we've challenged everybody, like, hey, we can do this for another another few months, August 1, we can open the whole thing back up. That's the goal I want to see out of the state government. And that's the challenge I have for Governor Northam and the, the Virginia Department of Health is challenge all of our people to do everything we can over the course of the next few months so we can get those numbers up on who, how many people have been vaccinated and so we can crush the amount of people who are actually getting sick. Because right now, you know, the people getting sick are probably in your uh, uh, probably in your demographic right now that listens to this podcast. It's young people. It's young people who are getting sick or ended up in the hospital. The way to prevent that is to continue to wear your mask, continue to keep your distance, and get the damn shot. <laughs> Stony Sony, he meant that. Oh yeah, he definitely meant that. Just get the shot. Get the shot. <laughs> did you personally have any side effects from after getting the two part vaccine? No, I did not. Uh, I, I've got one of the two. Okay. I get my next shot on uh, on four twenty, and hey. um, <laughs> <laughs> that was childish. I'm sorry. You deserve get better. My sir. Shot on <laughs> um, and uh, but you know I had COVID, and I tell you this, uh, COVID itself. Is a whole lot worse than 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 the shot. True. So all these people out here say, "Ah, oh, I mean, I'm gonna get side effects or whatnot." Try having a hundred and two fever for multiple days, four or five days. Oh no. How about losing your, your sense of smell and taste? You know, how about you know body aches for a week? Uh, you, you just feel lethargic all the time because you're fatigued. How about that? That I know what I would choose. I choose a shot over that any day. Yeah, no, that's right. That's a word you don't hear. Well, and when we everybody gets the shot, Lethargic. people can get back to work. Kids can get back to school. The economy can get better. I mean, but it all depends on everybody focusing on their own uh, their own health right now. Mm-hmm. That's that word he used again. Accountability. That's right. Accountability. That's See? the word of the hey, day. This is the biggest group project we've ever been involved in. Definitely. You can't, yeah. not one person can, it, this is about everybody, yeah. right? We yeah. all got to do our parts. We all know we had that person in class back in the day when, you know. <laughs> just, put, just put my name on it. Like, I want to do their part like, man, I was on those cats where I, I'd be on a team, on a, a team project. i do everybody's homework and be like, all right, you doing this, you saying that, you doing this. Uh-huh. But this is not one of those projects. Exactly. Everybody has to do their part. Yeah. I hear that. So you going for governor next then, right? <laughs> Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I can't be mayor forever. This is actually my last term. Yeah. Like the governor of this state, I'm term limited. So mm-hmm. I can only serve two term, two four year terms. And after that, um, I plan on pursuing another office. I don't know what office that is, but uh, you know, I, I think I I prefer to sit in a, an office where I can be the chief executive. So okay. I hear that. Yeah, because you you doing you doing an amazing job up there. Uh, um, my wife actually wants to move to Richmond. But, hey, uh, <laughs> hey, more and more people are so. Hey, pack the bags. Come nah, up. My, I can't, but my job, I got I got a day job here, so I can't move up there yet. Uh, hey, man, we got jobs here too. <laughs> <laughs> and 
that's a hell of a reference. I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> we got jobs here too, so you know, give us a look. Give us a look, okay? Yeah, yeah, you know what? I might. I might have to. All right, all right, all right. So I, I I don't know if you have to go yet because I know the guy uh, I talked to your people they said you only got thirty minutes with us today. Yeah, unfortunately, I, I, I you know, they be planning me pretty tight here these uh, days. Yeah, so I, I can imagine. I got this, the the team outside the door already knocked a couple times. And I said, you know, <laughs> yeah. when I don't answer, that means you know get away. But I probably oh, yeah. should you know hop off and you know go do my next thing. Not a problem. But before we let you go, is there any closing statement you want to give the people that might be listening? Or paying nah, their I just want to say, you know, 804 is my home now, but 757 will always have a place in my heart uh, because, you know, I am who I am today because of the 757. So uh, a shout out to all those who are part of the seven cities. Uh, I miss it. I come down not as often as I used to after losing my parents, uh, my grandmother, my dad, but I still make it down and down again. So next time I'm down, I come through. Storyteller, I had to, had to let you know, okay? Oh, yeah, definitely do that. Sound you know, good. Steve Steve about to come back home, too. So, you know, we got to get up for that. Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Yeah. <laughs> Drinks on me. Drinks on me. Nah, you got that other stuff, that scotch. I can't drink that, man. That's grown man beverages <laughs> right there. Nah, so we trying to get the bourbon going, though. Nah, bourbon. I don't want that either. That's just as bad. Yeah, he oh, needs a Zima. No. He's all right. Give him a Zima and a thought juice. Boy, I want to get <laughs> Get some, I get some vodka, I'll be alright, man. Oh no, messing with that clear. Nah, no, thank you. <laughs> well, Mayor Stone, no, it was a you. no, thank you. It was an awesome <laughs> honor to have a conversation with Definitely you. I know I'm gonna let David sign off with you, but I just want to tell you, me personally, I appreciate you taking out some time to come visit the EBR show, and I definitely appreciate you, sir. You're welcome, you're welcome. Yeah. I appreciate you, brother. Keep up the good work, okay? Yes, sir. Yeah, I appreciate it again, Stony Man. Good looking out on this. Uh, we will definitely have you back again. Uh, I know you got some big stuff coming up there. And if you need us for a show up there in Richmond, yes, sir. Holla, holla at me because we do events too. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, when we can start gathering again, you put your skills to use, okay? Yes, sir. Sound like All a friend right, to me, good All sir. Right, brother. <laughs> All right, take it easy. Have a good one, Later. sir. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that Maya was Stoney. That was Mayor Stoney right there on the EBR show. Did y'all see that? Yeah, they, yeah, Ooh. we had Mayor Stoney. Let's talk that. Music now, man. Nah, yeah, yeah, hold on, I'm getting. I'm to that. sorry, I got excited. Yeah. About yeah, that was dope. Yeah, I was excited about that. Maybe movie. one of them fix my collar and whatnot. I feel almost important around this place, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he did his thing. Want to set up in that my was... chair and get some scotch? Yeah. Uh, well, speaking of not uh, storyteller, nah, nah, nah. You heard on, it here first. Speaking of something, you said drink. clear stuff, that juice. And... I didn't know you said that. <laughs> <laughs> speaking of something to drink, uh, well, we got these two drinks that from the uh, the Vale Brewery. They got the, they're celebrating their five year anniversary coming up soon. That's right. And we got uh they got some what's this tasty lagoon deep dive edition. This, this is, one is called they. Yeah, the, the, the designs on the cans are dope yeah, too. These are dope. These are dope. But you should definitely check out the veil uh, in Norfolk. Definitely yeah, check out the sure he got a cup. I, I <laughs> definitely check out the veil in Norfolk. They uh they uh, have a, a, a beautiful building, nice layout. Uh, it's a nice setting. We've actually had a, a couple of shows a there, too. A couple of them, yeah. They, they always come out and have and a good time. And they came out and party in the rain with your boy Wonder Boy. They did, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Came out of here, storyteller, get busy. Yeah, we, and they enjoy all types of We music. had a great time. Great we time. had a great yeah. time. It's an awesome atmosphere as well, man. And, yeah. the, and the beer cheese fries, woo! Oh, yeah. Where's the rocket button? Boy, you need well, a no, guess. something else we had there, too. I know what I had, the beer nah. cheese fries. Shouts out to the veil. <laughs> <laughs> Slap, slap, tastic! Y'all heard it, boy. Yeah, it's definitely slap-tastic. good. Slap, definitely good stuff. Oh man! But uh, we gonna uh, go into a uh, the fable top. I mean, storyteller fable five is back. We're gonna go into one of them right now. We got homeboy Fred. That's right. Pop out. Check him out. He's on Spotify too. Check him out on Spotify, uh, SoundCloud, Instagram. Uh, for more music, he got it all. He got a lot of bangers, but this one I played before. We're gonna play it again because it's, it's a it's a banger track. Here we go, homeboy Fred, pop out. All right, good people. We'll try it first here. I ain't popped out in a while Niggas staring at me like they at my show But look, crowds ain't even my style I was leaving when I saw her Now I want her, I'ma make her bust down Got the loud in a bunch of weed that I'ma bust down I'm about to tip the waiter for the bottle right now Got her doing it like she ain't about to see me in a while 
it's too late to fix it, I ain't going back now I ain't thirsty, I'm just happy I can make her smile Guilty, but me, I'ma take it to trial I'm just in the moment that I'm living right now Probably wake up and somebody tell you not allowed That don't even sound right Know you got a man, but I know he not around Girl, look at you just looking like you straight from out of town, right? Know that he don't treat you like a queen and fit your crown, right? Girl, girl you bad, know your man try to keep you in the crib Get him mad, let him know that you gon' get it how you live You better shy, little baby, his controlling ass Let him know that you the only one control that ass Don't stop, let him know you got the wop Send his ass to the voicemail, tell him get the mop No kizzy, how you drippin', I can tell you got that drop Like a gift to me from God, beat it up like I'm a cop But I'm not, man, I, I, I ain't popped out in a wop Niggas staring at me like they at my show But look, crowds ain't even my style I was leaving when I saw her, now I want her I'ma make her bust down Got the loud and a bunch of weed that I'ma bust down I'm about to tip the waiter for the bottle right now Got her doing it like she ain't about to see me in a while It's too late to fix it, I ain't going back now I ain't thirsty, I'm just happy I can make her smile Guilty, but me, I'ma take it to trial I'm just in the moment that I'm living right now Probably wake up and somebody tell you Look, girl, don't stop cause you popping like that And I ain't gonna stop cause I'm toxic like that Roll with me, take you home with me Put my number in your phone Saving under old Britney, he won't know I'ma bring you in, take you when you ready to go Don't be calling me or texting me unless you alone If you know I wouldn't text that, leave it alone If you copy that, shit is a go You better know I'm moving downtown, midtown, uptown with it I be on war side, J side, Mercury with it I'm on the south side, north side, booming them bitches Big business, it ain't personal, nigga, get out your feelings, bitch. I ain't popped out in a while. Niggas staring at me like they at my show. But look, crowds ain't even my style. I was leaving when I saw her. Now I want her. I'ma make her bust down. Got the loud and a bunch of weed that I'ma bust down. I'm about to tip the waiter for the bottle right now. Got her doing it like she ain't about to see me in a while. It's too late to fix it. I ain't going back now. I ain't thirsty. I'm just happy I can make her smile. Guilty, but me, I'ma take it to trial. I'm just in the moment that I'm living right now. Probably wake up and somebody tell you uptown. Probably wake up and somebody tell you uptown. Homeboy Fred does it again. Pop out. Man, that's tough. That's a track. That's a track. Definitely. So we decided to uh, go ahead and crack the, one of these uh, beers over from the veil called Typhoon Lagoon Tasty. It's a smoothie style sour ale with coconut, passion fruit, key lime, and milk sugar. Sexy. 5.5% uh, alcohol. You said milk sugar? I never that's heard of that before. Yeah, that's what I said milk sugar. You that's sexy. Some, I'm going to yeah. give it a try. That is different and that is delicious. <laughs> oh, yeah, that tastes just like uh, a smoothie to me. It does. It does. It's not bad. Not bad at all. I can, yeah. I can get jiggy with this. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Match my outfit and everything. It's time to go already? Nah, son. That's, that's the that, outro. That's, that's not, sacred. That is sacred. That is go home music. We can, you know we got Peanuts, uh, beat, uh, Mike Buckets beat the outro now? Oh, we switched it up. Okay, my bad. Yeah, man. Come on, man. I got it, man. Just... All right. Mike Buckets came through. Just took over the show. I ain't mad at you. Man, I already played it once already, man. You forgot already. I did. I did. I ain't gonna lie. See, we, we talked about him that day, too, when I found, when I got it. <laughs> we did. <laughs> <laughs> well, anywho. Yeah. What's going on in the world today, storyteller? I don't know. I, or throughout I, the week, rather, you know. How was know. your week, anyway, before we even get started? Oh, yeah, that. true, true. My, uh, my week was uh, not too bad. The weekend uh, went by kind of quick. Uh, spring break, we didn't really do too much because I got my, my pops at the crib rehabbing. Uh, so we, we didn't really do too much. We ate a lot. That's about it. That's what's up. What about you? Now that you're free. Yeah, spring spring break was along, and uh, my son hung out with his mom, and my daughter's mother took her out of town, so they did their thing for the week. So, I enjoyed my time with the week at home, away from work with the wife. I know had a good right. time with Beulah May. And uh, Saturday weekend was trash. Why? Trash. Dang, now you meant that. Man, but, but, I'm telling you, sir. Trash. What? Man, I had a show in Virginia Beach, uh, Dinner Detective. Check it out. It's amazing. Anywho, <laughs> had a oh, show yeah. Saturday. Great show. Came back home. Me and the wife had some plans for the evening. I caught a flat tire in the HIBT. Oh, oh, you were one of them people. Hey, hey, you my You pissing bad. people off? My bad, yeah. They, they, they was hot. They was hot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know they were. Vida came and gave me a tow to, you know, to that little island area around the other yeah. side of the tunnel. Yeah. They said, yeah, we're going to take care of your tires, sir, free of charge. No problem. I said, worry, no problem. They got all four of my lug nuts off. And when it came down to the fifth one, that joint would not move. It was as smooth as this can. Just all the way Dang. around. It had no grip to it. Dang. 
So I had to wait for a tow truck. Some miscommunication from my insurance company to the tow agency happened, and I was stuck from 11.30 to 4.15 a.m. Dang. Waiting on my car to get towed, bro. Oh, nah. And I said, why well, I would bump it. I just paid it myself. It was like two ninety five to get to the crib. I said, oh. So did they reimburse you? Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. but at least that, but dang. But still, it was just 100% in the way. <laughs> that is definitely in, in the way. way. I just got my car back today because the, the place I had my car towed to didn't have my size tire. I had to get shipped in. Well, uh, drove in from the other location in Virginia Beach. That's what happens when you, buy, you drive a luxury car. Hey, 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 I'm still broke. Please don't get it to me. <laughs> you know what? I be feeling bad now because, you know, you ever come across somebody on the corner, uh, you know, that, you know, need, need some help. Need oh, yeah, some help. Yeah, you know, yeah. if I got some money, man, you got it, bro. I'm doing good in life. Always been taught that you're doing good, pass your blessings on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when I was driving my raggedy Honda Civic and I ain't had no money, it was like, oh, he look like he ain't got no money. But now I got a Bama and I ain't got no money. Now I just like a douche that just don't want to give no money away. Oh, yeah, I know. I'm be, still broke. I know he's staring at you right <laughs> in your face, too. Like, I know he got some money. Got still broke. Up. Please don't get it twisted. Broke just look decent. I ain't got no car payments. Like, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, what else can you say about that? Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway. So another thing in, in the news, Nas. Nasty Nas. Yeah, Nas in it, is in the news again for uh, another deal he done made. Nas' mm. coin, Coinbase investment can earn him a net of $100 million. Sheesh. I think that's like the third investment deal he had this year. Nas is making that making big money. He's making that Jay Z money off off to the side without rapping. That's the Nas I know. You know, I don't know about yeah, the young kids and Nas lap dancing to the devil and whatnot and got Kool Aid in the bottom of their uh, Air Max. <laughs> I don't know that dude. <laughs> <laughs> but Nasir? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I know Nasir Jones. I don't know that other dude. You ready? But what about your boy? My Ursher. Yeah. My Ursher. Oh Ursher. That boy big tripping boy. Yeah. <laughs> Throwing, throwing fake money at the strippers with his face on it. And he from Atlanta. He know how hard the women work. The women deserve our utmost attention. And the least we can do is give them a little tippage to let them know, hey, thank just, you and we appreciate your services. Yeah, just a little. A little something, something. Just this dude out here throwing hundreds, hundreds, making it rain. With his face Can you imagine them sweating and sweating? They weave out baby hair glue to the side of their forehead, making it twerk hard for Ursha Raymond. And then they go to the back and count that money. And it's a $100 bill with his face on it. It's called <laughs> Ursha Bucks. Yeah. No. Oh, we got the fight. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know. I, I see why the uh, one of the strippers was suing him. Oh, I didn't know it was a sue. Yeah, that's somebody suing him. <laughs> <laughs> so what can they do with the money? Like, I, what do they get? I don't know. I, I guess they get a, a time usher's mansion. I don't know. A, t- a time share usher? No, usher? a time at his mansion to just go chill with him. Mm. You got to think about getting a COVID shot and a herpes shot, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, because he, uh, he got some stuff going Let on. it burn. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely burning. <laughs> Let him knock you down. Your thing will look like a star crunch. You don't want that. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh, my gosh. Yeah, no, why, why would you say that? Am I star lying? Star crunch, though? Yeah. That's why I don't see y'all. There's a reason why I don't eat them anyway. Well, that's it right there. If I did if I did eat them, I definitely wouldn't eat them now. That's the one thing that bald headed cats got to got, got worry about, you know. I haven't been blessed with the, you know, the sexy hair follicles in the front. I got to shave my head. When I get to the back of that neck, take good care because the back of your neck will look smooth like a star crunch. I'm yeah, telling you. You're right. It sure will. I ain't mm-hmm. thinking about it like that. And imagine you smash somebody that's known to have herpes. What you think it's going to look like? Mm. A star crunch. <laughs> or the back of a payday. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's just horrible. Oh, man. Your boy Usher got... He thinking he uh, Prince Akeem got his own money. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> Your boy Big Bugger, man. That's exactly what he think he is, Prince Akeem. Man, just doing too much. And he, oh, we gotta give a, a, a some prayers still to you know DMX. He passed over the weekend too. Yeah, that was that. The DMX was a part of my childhood. That that one hurt. DMX is proof that you don't have to be hundred percent where you want to be for somebody to still use you. Yeah, yeah. DMX man, he he died at the same time as uh was it Prince Prince Charles? Oh yeah, one yeah, one of them. I don't know. Died, died the same day. One more paying more attention to him. So it doesn't matter what life you were born into, it's what you do with the life you have. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And he definitely put a stamp in my childhood. Like I said, it was DMX, you know, cannabis. They used to have a little battles back in the day, but right. DMX always he he's like hip hop. 
I always wonder what would have happened if Murder Inc. would have dropped the album. Are you and, talking about the original Murder Inc.? Yeah, the original Murder Inc. Jay Z, uh, DMX, and Ja Rule. Yeah, that would have been fire. Shh. That definitely would have been fire. Because before 50 got a hold of him, Ja Rule was spitting. He was a spitting dude, that, man. That wasn't because of 50. He did it to himself. Oh, ooh. Ja Rule kept getting on them, them uh, tracks singing and all that. Anybody got time for that? Even though, even though 50, 50 sing the whole 50 the whole career is him singing. What are you talking yeah, about? Well, 50 <laughs> had more street cred than Jai did at the time, I guess. Oh, so he can sing here, thug. Yeah. I got you. <laughs> I guess. Yeah, I, saying, I don't know. What, what? 50 shut his whole career down, so all you do is sing. And then imitated it. The next thing you know, I just want to kill and twist the life. <laughs> <laughs> 21 questions dropped immediately. Yeah, and people went crazy over it. It's wild, man. And that was damn... That damn show was just that. I still said Ja Rule was a pioneer of pop, pop rap. Between him, he laid a foundation and Drake took that thing to a whole new level. See, well, when I think of pop rap, I think of like... Don't say Will Smith, man. Oh. <laughs> well, Don't say Will Smith. Well, Chingy then. Chingy? That's pop rap. That's like that catchy one-hit wonder rap type stuff. No, when I hear pop, I mean pop like you can play the, the whole rap song on a pop station. Oh, and it will still get the same play. Like you know what I mean? Cause like NSYNC. Ja- yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you, you could hear a couple of Ja Rule and Ashanti tracks right behind Backstreet Boys and 98 Degrees or whatever. <laughs> yeah, true, true. You're not going to play Holiday Inn behind them. <laughs> <laughs> Which was a hit, by the way. That was a hitter. Yeah, but he's a one-hit wonder. I heard Chingy had some demons he had to yeah, that's the one get he, through. Yeah. Oh, that was the one that stabbed himself in the eye. I, no, no. I think that was... uh. That won't change you. That was old buddy that had that McDonald's commercial. I had the McDonald's whoa, commercial. Whoa, I like that. I like that, girl. Work oh, that back. Yeah, what, is what is his name? I think it's Houston? Yeah, Houston. Mar- yeah, not Marcus Houston. Lord, just Houston. Yeah, yeah Houston on your age. Yeah, you, you know who was at the Immature concerts, right? I was not. <laughs> <laughs> that <laughs> man! <laughs> but they, did have, they did have some fire tracks, so. Shut up, Roger. <laughs> they had some banging, banging uh, songs back in the day. They and, did. As Immature. I don't know about the IMX part. Immature, they were good. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> but did you see? Uh, I think Diddy called out some. Hold on, I forgot who it was. He called out one second. I forgot the boy. Didn't. He he in the news calling calling somebody out for racial injustice again. Another company. Oh really? Yeah. It's just this crazy usher. Usher in his drink. Hold on, my bad. I might mess with my computer. Anyway. <laughs> you don't even want to talk about it no nah. more. <laughs> but did you see it? We're going to switch. I just thought about uh, Black Rob, too. Uh, well, yeah, I, I was thinking that soon you brought up Diddy. Because Diddy had a post about uh, appropriation on the hip hop community. Yeah, that's what, yeah. And. You know they need to pay us for the services and the and what we're bringing to the to the world that you can turn and market to make money for these blue chip companies. Can you think about uh, Got Milk or, or or yeah Got Milk with Nelly or, or Cheerios oh, playing yeah, some Nelly songs? Yeah. Whatever. All that's taken from the hip hop community and they're making money off these blue chip marketable companies. Yeah. But some of the artists aren't getting paid for. It. Yeah, true. And Sean Puff Daddy Combs decided to be the guy to be the face of paying our artists. Yeah, after all the people he didn't jerk Bruh. around back in the day with their money in their contracts. Bro. I think he still got some people signed to him. Bro. <laughs> 112 still own two records. That's crazy. That's and, it. No, Bad Boy riding, the, yo, Bad Boy itself, the face of Bad Boy Puffy, he caked up, but all his artists riding the struggle bus. Yeah, like, they are. Your boy Black Rob. Yeah, Didn't he, he come out as being homeless when he was in the hospital or something like that? Yeah, yeah, he looked bad. Somebody set up a, a, a GoFundMe for him, but he still, he looked, he looked bad. It looked real bad. And yeah, I would think that Diddy would be the first one to you know step come up. In and step up and get his man at least somewhere to stay for a a couple a couple weeks to get on his feet or something. But yeah, I don't even know if Diddy even reached out to him. I like this blue stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you went this back to the good. blue stuff. This joint good. It's alright, man. This it's for I can see it be for a female, probably popular with the females. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And keep this on deck. <laughs> nah. Satin pillowcases, so I mess her hair up. Oh Lord, there you go. I don't need no satin pillowcases. I'm good. <laughs> uh, it don't matter. Yeah. Just get it in. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. This is true, folks. 
Let's go to number two. Excuse, oh, excuse me. Hold on. This pollen is it was kicking my ass. Yeah. Hey, I don't know what the government put in the pollen this year, but bruh. You know why? It's, <laughs> it's affecting us so much this year because last year this time is when everybody had to go into hiding because of COVID. You're right. So, so they didn't get a taste of it. Nah, and this year it's in full swing. It's got my nose all jacked up. When I went and picked up my car after it sat for two days, that one was green. Oh, yeah. That pollen sticking. You can wash your car in the morning and by the time you finish, you think you dried it off, it's pollen right back on that gym. That's all wild. So we got a song coming up by Chantel Diverse. It's called Reasons. You can follow her on all, she's on all major um, music outlets too. And she got all her videos on YouTube. Again, her song is called Reasons, Chantel Diverse. That was a banger right there. I told you that girl that girl could sing. She can sing, sing. She can sing, sing. What's the difference in singing and singing? It definitely is. And that right there was singing. So we got a, uh, we're going to give y'all another review on this. What What's the, what's this one called? They. Yeah, this one's called They. And it dropped the same week as Them came out. How you feel about Them? You been watching them out? Oh, I've been watching it. And Them is crazy. <laughs> Uh, there's apparently there's some uh, historical facts behind the the whole show. Like it's really how uh, African Americans got treated when they came to East Compton. 
<clears throat> when they first came to East Compton. Yeah. And it's a wild show. This I'm not even gonna say anything because there's a part in that movie that will make you wanna kill some people. Oh, like, my. It's 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 bad. I I got the same rage from watching this when I first saw Higher Learning. Mm. And Higher Learning made me want to go out and start beating up people too. But back to this day. <laughs> <laughs> this is a a, a step smashed lager brewed with raw wheat. Hot with Pearl and El Dorado. Whatever that is. The artwork one is dope. And it's 5% alcohol too. You said 5%? Yeah, it's 5%. The can says recycle or die. Yeah, see. <laughs> Those are your options, player. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the Veil. They care about the environment. Yes, they do. All right. Let's try it out. It smells good. It does. And that was very happy. Oh, that's a beer. Yeah. That's a beer beer. Yeah. It really don't. It re, yeah, it really don't have a bad of a taste. It really don't have that much of a taste at all. Very neutral. Neutral and balanced, I guess I would say, right? Yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. That was good. That was good. I, I, I'd get this one again. Okay. For five percent, it ain't bad. I don't think it'd give me a headache like the rest of the uh, other five percent janks would. Man, them just be eight percent now. Them. Y'all, y'all know what a fat juice is, right? Them, that's the one you got your little jump, jump coming through. I'm like, I just need me like a little lime, the Bud Light lime marita or <laughs> a blue motorcycle in a can. Get me a wood tip black and mild in the McDouble I come through. Not the wood tip? Not the wood tip? <laughs> hey, she classy. She want the wood tip. Mm. The jazz jump. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know about that. You introduced me to that thought juice, and it's horrible. I can't drink it no more. <laughs> I, had, I was on a run for about a month. Man, my stomach all toe up and everything. Man, that's for a different breed, bro. <laughs> it definitely is. I guess that's a for be- beginner drinkers. I guess I'm, like when I'm we had uh, Mad Dog and... Uh, Bones Farm. Yeah, Bones Farm, Night Train. Night Train? Uh, yeah. I never uh, heard of that one. I heard of Cisco. Yeah, Cisco's on that. That was another one on the bottom with night, next to Night Train. What's the Rose one called? Oh, Irish uh, Rose? Uh, uh, yeah, Wild Irish Rose. That's the that's the bum stuff right there. Yeah. Yeah, this is definitely a yee. Yeah. And, ugh, just think saying that word. Yeah, you buy one bottle of um, Wild Irish Rose, you get five free paper bags to go with it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, that's not man. good, yo. Mm-hmm. But what about, you heard about this Johnson & Johnson vaccine for COVID? Yeah, I did. You know what? It's crazy because... Uh, Shout out to Lee Sports. Uh, your boy Chris was Chris was here talking about doing the interview. He's saying that's the one he's waiting on. It's he just show, uh, he show the one was. shot go to, you know. Hey, brother, you better stay away from I him. I can trust them. They make baby lotion and, and, yeah. and shampoo. I yeah. said, uh huh. That shampoo said no tears. And you was crying in the shower, won't you, boy, boy? <laughs> Man. You know, crying, you get that shot. That thing is that's supposedly it. making people have blood clots. Yeah, yeah. And the blood clots, man, they can shoot up and, 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 and get into your lung and stop your heart rate and all that, man. That's wild. Like we ain't here taking temps right now, making sure everybody good. I know bro. that's right, cause ain't nobody trying to get sick. No, yeah, we all we all safety precautions right here in the Loud House. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? Powered by Virginia Radio. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> we all about it around here, mom. Yeah, cause my job was offering the Johnson and Johnson shot. Uh, actually, Vaccine? Yeah, starting tomorrow, and we got an email this morning saying, or uh, well, this afternoon saying that they weren't gonna uh, administer that shot anymore. So I guess we gotta. That's got to go back into the... The Pfizer or Pfizer. Yeah, Pfizer or what's that? Moderma. That's the other I heard one. about the Moderma, yeah. So, I don't I don't know. I'm still waiting. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not taking mine right away. Uh, I don't know. Something just tells me to wait still. Until I start doing more events and I'll start getting a shot. But as of right now... Mayor Stoney just said this is... See, I, I, Mayor Stoney, I told you. He was he was the guy in the group project. Just put my name I on it. But I'm not, going out, <laughs> I'm not going out to the parties, though. I ain't right. doing nothing that. I still keep you know what's wild? Your people are still partying, like like partying. Like you gotta wear your mask to get to the door, but when you get in there, you can, you take, can it take it off. off. Yeah, what's what does that even make? You right? I I don't know, bro. It's this a is... mask mask to get in. That's pretty much it, and you can take it off. That's just as bad as charging the bald headed dude that ain't had time to shave his head an extra ten dollars at the door so he can keep his hat on. <laughs> yo, that was the most disrespectful stuff I ever experienced. <laughs> Somebody did that to you? Yeah, yo, that's what they do at the clubs now, bro. What? Yeah, oh, I had see. a I had a event or whatever. Well, no, I'm, I, my homeboy had an event. I came to support, and I ain't had time to shave my head, so I had to fit it on to go with my fit. And mm-hmm. he was like, "All right, you know, it's you know ten, you know, it's like fifteen to get in." I said, "Boom! All right, cool. You want to keep your hats? Ten more dollars." 
Wow. Yeah. Back in the day, they made me take my hat off. My even my hair on. That's even. how it was. Oh, yeah, you, you just have to take your hat off. But now it's like, well, you can keep your hat on, but you got to charge you extra ten dollars yeah. for it. Wow. The only dress code, uh, I guess bylaw or something that they instituted that I agree with is no Tim's because you never know when a fight might break out. Ain't nothing yeah, like getting stomped out with a pair board. of Tim's. Yeah, board. you don't want that. You don't want them problems. Or somebody that got on some work shoes and playing them off with Tim's and a steel toe. Ooh, yeah, well, see, cause I got some steel toe Tim's in the crib now. In the work oh, place. I didn't know they. Oh, nah. Yeah, so nah. I I, I agree with that one too because them, them Tim's can get dangerous. Real dangerous in the club. The only thing you can hope for is like now, you know, you know, cats don't tie them up and they be a little loose, man. They try to go for a kick and that shit fly off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hope. All, yeah. That that's... only happens in New York. <laughs> <laughs> Around here, they lace them up tight. Just snug tastic. <laughs> yeah, like snug Tim's. Man, I ain't never seen it, man. Yo, I seen a, um, I remember when I was in high school, it was a dude in my school here on a pair of Tim's. But they were called Tim's. T I T I M apostrophe S. Where you get them from? Them, uh, it, it was a tree on there, and the tree had a little apple on the joint. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Where you get those from? Probably Marshalls. I don't know. <laughs> 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 Maybe A J Wright, because that was still popping back in the oh, day. Yeah, yeah, it was. Oh no, he probably gonna go from Value City. Oh yeah, Value City. Yeah. Hey, okay. I ain't gonna lie. Value City came through in the clutch for a, 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 a fit though. Like when just they, just something plain. When they were going out of business, I was in there every day. Oh, I know it. Because they had some, they were selling everything, light fixtures and everything. <laughs> My man said light fixtures. <laughs> they shellings. It was just, they were selling everything. And when they, when stores like that go out, you know, I try to get, in, try to see if they got some value. I can sell to somebody else. Yeah, I, feel I normally ain't going to keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go into another track, though. Uh oh, okay. We're going to go into this, this classic, I'm going to call it a classic on our show. Uh, Flex by Jay. We'd have heard. I think it's probably the third time I played it. I'm gonna I'm play it again because the music that I've been getting has been, has been trash. All our so, EBR listeners is uh, getting tired of us playing the same y'all trash. Y'all, you know what that means? You gotta send us some heat. Yeah, some heat. Don't give me that lollipop stuff. I can't listen to that. Send us some heat. You can email it because we got an email address. What is the story tell them? Everything but religion at Gmail. Yes, sir. You send us some tracks, or you can hit us up on our YouTube page, EBR.radio.virginia. Or that VA, so you got you got you, you man. I tell you, boy, <laughs> you contagious. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, J Flex. Three A. It's been one hell of a night. I took the top off the ride and turned up the vibe. Put the bullshit to the side. Money that thing that I like. This is totally out of sight. Can't get it out of my mind. Have a hard time trying to keep track of the grind. And you know where to find me. I'm out in Virginia with the city right behind me. And nobody designed me. I don't need no shooters. Got the Ruger right beside me. So I pick and roll. I gotta go. On a roll, 20 years show. I'm on a roll, so I get the dough, then I got a bow. My foot in the door, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, hey. Fuck what you heard, I put on for my city, and everyone love it. I can't get mine, and I'm always on time, got the check off a budget. I do it the hardest, there's really nobody that's ever competing. If I said it, I mean it, believe it. I just came to flex, chase another check Pull up on a set and make them haters snap they neck Been dripping from the jump and I ain't finished dripping yet I know they never heard of me, I bet they won't forget I'm on a roll, I'm on a roll, I'm on a, I'm on a roll Gotta reload, gotta reload, chamber and ready to go Taking it slow, I never fall She know that I like it. Yeah. Can't try to hide it. I can't try to fight it. I gotta be real with my sidekick. Yeah. She get invited. Yeah, she's so excited. And we up all night on some my shit. Smoking and drinking and popping. We wildin' and living the best on the option. We ride through the city. Can't stop us. We open up shopping. Uh. Yeah, that's right. I got a check. Hey. Spin it all and got it back. Hey. Do some carrots on my neck. Hey. Hey. Uh. And now they show me some respect. Hey. Hey. Yeah. What? What? I remember back in the day. They wasn't checking for me. Then I link up with the gang. I fuck around and get paid. Try to tell them I was next. Line of muscle, I could flex. You know I'm young and so restless. I got a stun on my axis. And I'm still talking my shit. Still walk with a limp. 
Still collecting my chips. Still carry the 40. 45 on my whip. And I'm still finessing like Tony. I've been mobbing on hits. Fuck what you heard, I put on for my city and everyone love it. I can't get mine and I'm always on time, got the check off a budget. I do it the hardest, there's really nobody that's ever competing. If I said it, I mean it, believe it. I just came to flex, chase another check Pull up on a second, make them haters snap their neck Been dripping from the jump and I ain't finished stripping yet I know they never heard of me, I bet they won't forget I'm on a roll, I'm on a roll, I'm on a, I'm on a roll Gotta reload, gotta reload, chamber and ready to go Taking it slow, I never fall Yeah. Well, anyway. That was Jay Flex. Flex. Three X's. That's yeah. right. Yeah, you can check him out on YouTube, too. He has a lot of a lot more um, bangers on there. He had an uh, EP come out uh, not too long ago. It has, a, I think, about seven tracks on it, and they all they all fire. You definitely check them out. Now, oh. what were you saying about the Empire guy? Empire, Empire, Empire. Your boy, Yaz the Great. Straight from Philly. <laughs> Yeah, the homie got locked up for a uh, domestic violence. Domestic violence. Oh, yeah. Dang, got him. Yeah, yeah. He said that uh, he had a two-hour-long interview to where he's defending himself, saying, "I have a career. I am an artist, and I have a lot to lose." And pretty much blaming that his fiance was just hyping it on that nothing happened, but. It's no evidence that he put hands on her. I mean, the only one that look rough is him, but that's just, you know, that's just COVID roughness, you know. Nah. Mask, right. no haircut, you know, that's all that is. Like when Bow Wow got beat up? But he looks too big not to have on no chapstick, then though. Bow Wow. Yeah. It's out. <laughs> he look rough. Man. Yeah, like a, a, a croissant, man. Come on, bro. Man, he got beat up, so that's what it looked like. Like she dragged him a couple of times. And it's possible. It's, it's, it's possible. I mean, we, it's that, that, uh, I don't know, mantra or, or that, that kind of environment we live in in this world where it's not okay for a man to report when he's getting abused by a woman. But on the flip side, you know what I'm saying? If a woman just accuses a man of touching her, yeah, you're getting locked yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's that nonsense. Could be straight line, just straight. Yeah, they don't even look into it. They just automatically say, oh, yeah, he's guilty. That's something Shut I always heard. The first person to get first person to get to the phone. That's that's who the cops gonna believe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a rest of who can get to the phone first. That's a and it ain't right though. I mean, I'm, I'm not condoning it at all, but it's the truth. I mean, you know, you always find some type of comedy or something funny in just an effed up situation, and that's one of them. Just yeah. just because you got something swinging between your legs, that's just how it works. I know, and it's like you said, that's just dead ass wrong. It is. Cause it, it shouldn't it shouldn't be like that. It shouldn't be that easy for a female to cancel somebody. Yo, just imagine we've seen multiple elevator incidences recently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Imagine so we saw what happened with uh I forgot Buddy first name, Rice. Oh, for uh, the, uh for Baltimore Ravens. Ray, Ray Rice. Ray, Ray Rice. Rice. You seen him smooth knock his wife he's out. Straight, yeah, he's Cold up, copped yeah, he up cut her. Everybody was like, yeah, he need to be removed from the league. Absolutely, no problem, no problem, no problem. Then we seen how everything went down with Quavo and... uh, uh was it, Sweetie? Yeah, Sweetie. Yeah, he didn't touch him. She swung on him. He he, he dipped out. Away, let it, and later, let pushed up against the wall to, yeah. the, to make sure she don't hit him no more. And she hit the deck. He didn't touch her, though. Mm. And he walked out. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Everybody saying he was he, he was he was a less of a man for putting his hands on him, for touching him, touching him, just defending himself. But he never yeah. actually hauled off and hit her. No, not at all. And then you seen what happened with Jay and Solange. Oh yeah, yeah. Solange was <laughs> smacking that dude up, man. He didn't touch her not one bit. He just stood. Even yeah, Beyonce just stood there. <laughs> I know you're right. Yeah, she should have been like, "Yo, don't hit my man." Like, yeah, yeah. Did, didn't touch. Didn't do it all. But then again, if he would have reacted somewhere close to Ray Rex, not even. Knock her smooth out, but just raise his hand at her as if he was going to. We, we, we come on now. Oh, yeah, it'd have been a wrap. As much yeah. as Jay got, as much as he's building, as much as he's putting forth right now, come on now. Yeah, it would have, it, yeah, they would have canceled him too. It ain't right. Yeah, cancel culture. That, that's, man. 
<laughs> touch a touch a female or, or elevator cameras and Twitter are just taking careers left and right, bro. <laughs> they, oh yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah well, Twitter. Uh, well, except for the digging up the old stuff, I think that's kind of messed up. Cause what they did with uh, Kevin Hart and the with the Oscars, the Grammys, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Was kind of dumb, and he won't even make an. I don't know. Just certain people you can't talk about. Yeah, or it's gonna be a wrap. That's <laughs> They can. <laughs> well, he's back though. Yeah. You see, Wild and Out's back finally. I'm glad he's he back on AGT though. Nah, well, I don't even know what channel he's on. No, nah, I'm saying he's not on AGT. Oh, nah, you remember he, he was going to? Uh, yeah, but America's Got Talent. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure. But you heard how he got? Well, he didn't get fired. He quit. So I, I do kind of commend him on standing on his grounds. You know, he was doing a stand-up special, and uh, it was called. Uh, can't remember. Anyway, he was doing a stand-up special. Nick and doing, Yeah, Nick Cannon. Yeah. The last one that he just dropped, I think it was called Stop, Don't Shoot. I want to say that's what it was called. Oh, I didn't know he had a stand-up show. Anyway, he, he was doing that. And in there, he was talking about how Nick, how uh, NBC was taken away from his swag. He was like, yeah, I can't be out here. You know, I'm already wearing a turban. I can't be out here. Y'all got me talking about, you know, dogs jumping through hoops and all this stuff. You know, y'all mm. take away from my street career. You know, something like that. Yeah. That was the premise of the joke. I mean, he went more into detail about it. But yeah. That was pretty much the setup. NBC approached him and said, well, you know, in your contract, you can't say anything negative about the uh, the network. Oh. He was like, you need to take that out, out your, uh, your stand-up performance. And he said, nah, freedom of speech. Yeah, yeah. He lost a job behind that. On AGT, anyway. That's how that went. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And then that whole, that whole Jewish community uh, rebuttal he was given about... Uh, you know, back when he was on uh, with Wild and Out. Yeah. Which I think is dope that he's back on there and he, you know, he had yeah, a conversation well, with the people that mattered and he understood that, you know, certain things and certain people you just ain't supposed to be talking about. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, you said, man. Yeah. That brings that all the way around to what you were saying. It's just certain people who just, uh, yeah. conversation just need not be had. So. And they can do some of the dumbest things you still can't say nothing. Yeah. Not right. in a negative light anyway. Right, right, right. Or it's going to be a rap. Especially when you got some type of file, and when that file was built on a platform they built. Nah. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a rap. Yeah, you can't, you can't do that. Not gonna have that, son. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. You right, you right. Oh, there was another movie. Um, I'm about to ask you, did you watch? Thunder Force. Oh no, I did not check that out yet. Yeah, Yo, you definitely got. When the wife saw it. Yo, I she didn't see it. I saw it. Oh really? Yeah, it, that was hilarious, yo. Like, it looked funny, man. <laughs> Melissa McCarthy, she lost a lot of weight too. She lost a lot of weight. Hashtag snatched. <laughs> <laughs> but she, uh, the movie is is, is I mean, it's a comedy. That's you look, you looking to laugh? That's guaranteed to make you laugh. All right, check it out. I saw that um, Jamie Foxx also has a show coming out on um, Netflix. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop embarrassing me. That looked pretty good. Yeah, I, I like the premise too. of it. Yeah, I've always been a big Jamie Foxx uh, fan, so he's like one of my favorite actors uh, slash singers. That's a renaissance like, man. Right? Yeah, he can do slash it Slash comedian. <laughs> yeah. Hey, his stand-ups, all his stand-ups are, are dope. Yeah. He's like somebody that, I'm going to try to get him on the show. Man, oh, definitely. I'm with it. I'm with it. Yeah, that'd be Let's dope. Let's pursue it. I'm with it. Why not? We had the mayor on here today. <laughs> he can go for everything. Brum, 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 brum. <laughs> brum, 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 brum. You know what I'm saying? Everybody, so. A uh, Invincible on oh, yeah. Amazon Video, man, Amazon Prime. Yeah, Inv- man, cartoon superhero. Check guy. it out, bro. I definitely want to see it. Somebody tell a story. Tell this cartoon is heat because it is, yo. <laughs> I definitely want to see it. Fire, man. It's fire, bitch. It's fire, 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 fire. Definitely want to. Definitely gonna check that out at some point. I had to finish. Got to finish watching them. I think we got three episodes left. Then we can get on the. Invincible. So that's the whole season that they dropped, right? With yeah. Uh huh. Oh. There's ten episodes. Okay. But it's it, yeah, it's it's, it's something. I'm, I want to say something so bad, 